Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll talk about load balancer, which is a very important component of any scalable system. I'll start with why do we need load balancers, then go on to explain the fundamental ideas about how it works, and finally talk about some of the routing algorithm it uses to distribute traffic efficiently among the backend servers. This is how your architecture looks without load balancers. You have only one server that is running your application, Whenever users want to visit your website, the sender requests your loan server and your server responds back. This works fine for a small amount of users. However, the moment you start getting more and more users, you'll start hitting scaling issues. Due to this huge traffic, your server might go down and that would mean you won't be able to respond to any users. Your website's latency will also increase because you have only one server responding to requests. And of course, you suffer from the single point of failure problem because everything depends on this one master server. As a result, this is a very risky architecture for popular applications. Now let's say you decided to scale your application. So you copy over your code to three servers, all ready to respond to user requests. However, the problem is, how does your users know which backend server to connect to? This is where a load balancer comes in. The load balancer sits between your users and your backend servers. It takes in a user request and forwards it to one of your backend server. As you can see here, we have three users, A, B, and C. All of these users are hitting our load balancer. The load balancer then forwards the request to our three servers. In this architecture, we don't have to worry about increased latency because the traffic is being distributed among the three servers. So each server is responding to only one request at a time, unlike our previous architecture with one backend server. This is the fundamental idea of a load balancer. It takes in user requests and then just forwards it to one of the many backend servers. Even though we have multiple servers, Individually, the servers might still go down. Now the question is, how does the load balancer know if any backend server is down? Otherwise, it will forward user requests to servers that are down, which will result in the user seeing an error. To prevent the situation, the load balancer performs something called health, called health check for every server. Periodically, the load balancer will ping a backend server and expect a response back. If the server does not respond back, it will consider that the server is down and stop forwarding requests to that server. Let's say a few minutes later, the server responds to the health check. Once that happens, the load balancer will resume sending requests to that server. This makes sure even if some of our backend servers are down, the load balancer automatically handles it and keeps the application running with when the other back uh, with the other backend servers. Now that we know the fundamental idea behind load balancers, let's take a closer look at how the load balancer decides which server to forward the request to. There are many algorithms that a load balancer can use to distribute traffic. Let's take a look at some of the most common ones. The most simple algorithm is the round robin algorithm. The load balancer just arranges the backend servers in order and then sends user requests to them sequentially in the same order all the time. Let's say you have three servers A, B, and C. The load balancer will send the first request to A, second to B, third to C, and fourth again to A. Another popular algorithm is called least connections. The load balancer forwards the request to the backend server that has the least number of active connections. Active connection means the number of requests the server is already serving right now. This makes sure that the most free server responds to the latest user request. The last algorithm we'll look at is called the source algorithm. The load balancer just hashes the IP address of the incoming request to find which server to forward the request to. The hash is deterministic, so every time you have the same IP address, you'll get the same server. This makes sure that a given IP is all 
is already routed to the same backend server, which comes with a bunch of benefits. As you can see, you can have a load balancer running with some pretty straightforward routing algorithms, and it will do wonders for you. There you go, guys. That's pretty much all there is to know about the basics of load balancers. If you like the content, please leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye-bye.